Uh, how you doing, KD? Uh, I'm right here. Uh, how you doing? Uh, this is TBJF Hoops and Brews. Uh, was this the b best game offensively you've ever had? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I scored 50 points, but I missed some good shots tonight. <clears throat> uh, I feel like I could have made a few more. Um, but, I, I, I mean, I, I felt great. I felt great. You know, it was a fun game for sure. Hey, uh, Kevin Durant, Cameron Buford, LA News Observer. I got a question totally irrelevant to this series. The Seattle, Seattle on the 13th of May is having a meeting to try to bring back the Sonics. Would you lend your name to any or give any support to that effort to bring the Sonics back to Seattle? I mean, I've been, since I've been in the league, since we left, I've been screaming that team needs to go there. So, yeah. Okay, that's perfect. We're going to reach out to you, yeah, big guy. I'm sure somebody just seen that. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. I appreciate that, too, man. It's a good question for the city right there. I like that. Yeah, I came to see you play up there 2008, I guess it was, before you left, before you guys left, man. Nice. So that would be good to get the Sonics back to Seattle. Sure. And I'm hold you re responsible for that. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'll take it. Hey, Kevin, the point you made earlier this week of like all the, the work you do behind the scenes to stay at this level consistently, what do you think is key in that routine and what, what is kind of the day-to-day -day with that? Uh, first, it just starts with uh, mentally preparing um, to, you know, um, work on my skills, you know, on a day-to-day, -day, you know. And it's, uh, you guys, any NBA player, it's tough to, especially when you've been in it for so long, to keep doing the same things over and over again. But, um you know, that's those uh, what brings results. So, you know, it's just pretty simple. We just get up, you know, uh, get shots up, and focus on the game when I'm at home, see how I can be better um, throughout the game. Just always just trying to be a student, to be honest. You know, that's just been my approach. Kevin, Chris with Fantasy Sports Cave. Obviously, you, got, you had a good offensive game. But let's talk about the defense. Can you talk about how your defense flew around today? I know there was one possession where they doubled you, turned it over, but you sprint back and blocked Gallinari. Could you talk about the effort from all of you guys defensively today? Yeah, Pat Beverly with another 14 rebound night. That's, that's crazy. But I think, uh, you know, we uh, held them with 39% shooting, uh, which is a win for us. Um, they out rebounded us, but I think we just made a miss tonight. You know, we made a miss. You know, we made Lou Williams three for twenty-one. Damn, I didn't know he was three for twenty-one. That was a great job by Clay Andre doing the just making him see bodies and hands. And um, but we just try to we just try to make every one of their looks tough. I think last game they were just a little bit too free in their movements and their actions that they call. You know, coming downhill. Not really a body on them, shooting uh, open threes because we're leaving guys. So I think tonight we just locked in on more so individual game plan for each player. Tomaris Arthur from Clutch Points. Uh, Kevin, since you joined, uh, the Clippers are one of the few teams to push you guys to six games. What what can you say about them when they were predicted to get swept by most? Uh, well, whoever predict anything about basketball, you can't predict this game. Like you can try to make assumptions, but. Anything can happen, and that's we expected that, especially with this group. You know, they might not have the huge names, but they got great. They got players that can play on any team in this league. You know, from top to bottom, um, from Gallinari to Pat Bev to Lou Will, who was all world scorer, to Montrez Harrell to Garrett. I mean, from the down the line, they got just solid players, and we knew we had to play our A game for us to have a chance because they they will coach. They um, they're not going to stop playing, and uh, they have fun playing with each other. Hi, Kevin. Uh, some of your teammates did not have great series or particularly great games. When that happens on nights like tonight, do you recognize that very early on and take it upon yourself to compensate for that offensively? Uh, I just keep on humming no matter what. You know, I just play my game through it all. I think, um, you know, I definitely don't want to go away from my teammates if they're struggling to shoot the ball, you know, still keep them in the game. But at the same time, um, you know, be aggressive and try to win the game as well. Uh, but we trust in all our, our guys and like Clay, Steph, if they're not making shots early, we're still going to try to find them and get them going. You know, I think that's they do that with everybody. You know, if I'm not going to start the game, we all trying to look for each other. You know, we play a team game when everybody touches the basketball, we uh, we're in good shape. 
uh, Logan Murdoch, NBC Sports Bay Area. Kevin, you guys only have one day until you know your next game against the uh, the Houston Rockets. How do you recalibrate and for a team that as well rested as they are and are ready for you guys? Well, in the NBA, uh, we pretty used to the schedule where we play a game, then day off, then another game. We pretty much do that all year, so uh, it's pretty. Uh, you know, it's just our routine, so hopefully we come to play. Kevin right here. Uh, Eric Pingus, Basketball Insiders, Bleacher Report. Uh, you sort of touched on this a moment ago, but this team has some high power scoring, obviously, some of your teammates. Uh, how do you balance that? When do you know? You, you talked about when to be aggressive. Is, is it a feel? Is it how the defense is playing you? When, maybe the team needs it. How do you find that this is my game, I need to be the one to take those shots instead of Steph or Clay? I just never know until the game starts, you know, it's just a flow. I just can't really explain it, you know, if the game is, uh, I mean, it's just a perfect balance that we have. We've been playing with each other. We know each other. We have good chemistry. And I know when Steph's going, he knows when I'm, when I'm going and Clay and, Dre, and all the way down the line. So, you know, uh, we sacrifice shots for each other. We sacrifice opportunities for each other. And I think, you know, uh, coach and everybody on the team kind of knows how the game is being played and who needs to touch it. and what we need to run the offense through. I think everybody has a good feel and an IQ for the game each night. Shelly Smith from ESPN. I know you told Doris that you were lost in the game, thinking about possession, just getting the next possession, next possession. When did you realize that things were going pretty well for you, especially in the first half? Uh, <clears throat> I feel like every night goes well for me that I'm healthy and I get to play. And uh, I get to... Uh, you know, just dive deep into the game. I mean, miss and makes, you know, they happen. Um, but usually when I'm in it is when I'm following the defensive game plan to the T, when I'm um, flying around on the defensive side, and we all in communicate, all on one string. I think that's usually when I'm in the game. Farboat Clips Nation. So Coach Kerr mentioned that the Clippers brought the best out of this Warriors team. Can you mention what they brought out of you? Uh, well, the physical defense was one of those things. Um, they got multiple, multiple guys that don't give up on plays, um, you know, especially with the movement that we have and the shooters, the guys that run around the three-point line. They didn't, they didn't really give up too many easy shots. And uh, it starts there. Uh, with them, you know, I've seen them all season. You know, they play everybody tough. They get into everybody. They pick up full court. They into your hip on pin downs. They, you know, going over the game plan. They adjusting throughout the game. I think they're just well coached. They play extremely hard, and you know, they put together a good group of guys that can, you know, do multiple things. Lou coming off the bench never really complained about minutes or anything. He just know he's gonna play and play his game. So. Uh, He's the guy that's kind of the head of the snake and Montrez Harrell as well. So, you know, those two guys have phenomenal seasons and, you know, definitely became more. I was always a huge Lou Williams fan, but even more of a Lou Williams fan after this series and Montrez Harrell and the whole team. But those two guys really stood out to me. Two more, Mark, right there. Kevin, you know, you know in James Harden's games over the years, what does it take t as a team to minimize the fouls and gain with the free throw line? And what things does he do to make that difficult? I think even... Um, more important than the free throws, just that's not his whole game. You know, he can do everything. You know, he can, if you not focus, he can drive past you, hit you with the shoulder because he's strong, finish either hand. He's shooting floaters now. Obviously, the step back three pointer is, 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 is one of his staples, but um, I never really believed he was just a free throw guy. You know, he can, he can, he can score in a variety of ways. So, we have to be locked in from the beginning. You can't fully stop a guy like that. You just try to, you just got to be, uh, be ready to play him tough all, all game. Hey, Kitty, Josh with uh, SB Nation. Um, when you're going into the playoffs, would you prefer playing uh, a series where, you know, it's a 4 0 sweep, a little bit easier for you, or would you rather have a series like this where you were tested and you guys were uh, battling? I mean, obviously, we would love to win 4-0 every series. Uh, that would be ideal, but we know it's the playoffs. So it's not really going to happen that way. But um, I think uh, just everybody in this locker room has been through every type of series, so we just prepare for anything. But definitely would love a sweep for sure. <laughs>
Okay, so KD still likes Seattle. And oh, by the way, 50 points is pretty good. Now the Rockets are next. We'll hear from Steph and look ahead to that series. How about Steph Curry? How's that ankle? How's he feeling? We'll find out. Hey, so how's uh, the ankle holding up overall and what was key in still playing through it? Say what? How's the ankle and what was key in still playing through that was tonight? Uh, it's fine. I mean, stuff happens. Just any time, obviously, with me and ankles, um, it's kind of a little different kind of conversation, but I'm feeling good, ready for Sunday. Steph, Ann Killian, San Francisco Chronicle. Speaking of Sunday, how do you handle the turnaround? You guys, um, this is the longest you've been pushed in a first-round series, and does your familiarity with Houston help? Definitely helps, um, but we're not that old. In quick turnarounds, we should be all right. Uh, you know, obviously it was not ideal in terms of what opportunity we had after game or during game five, but came down here, took care of business. Like you said, we have a, a pretty good sense of what Houston likes to do. Uh, there'll be subtle nuances we'll have to adjust to, but um, like the momentum we, we created tonight, and hopefully that'll carry over to Sunday uh, with our defensive effort. Obviously, what KD did tonight was unbelievable. Uh, he's in a groove right now, and, and usually the best thing for a, a guy playing like that is just keep playing. So uh, take care of our bodies tomorrow, have an opportunity to look at some film and talk about some of it, you know the, the game plan going into the series, and then just play hard on Sunday, try to get off on a good foot. Hey, Steph. Uh, the Clippers, they played you guys tough. You know, took you to six. Land Landry Shaman was on your hip all series. What kind of can you guys take from this series into Houston? The intensity was raised. How can you guys really go forth and just take care of business? Honestly, this uh, six games felt like it was two months in terms of all the different adjustments and emotional roller coaster from game two, you know, their comeback to – losing game five and, and how we've bounced back in between. So tested us. Uh, they played amazing, you know, really made us, you know, have to raise our, our level of play. And tonight we did that. So we talk about it all the time, like every playoff series in order to win, whether it's a sweep, whether it's in five, six or seven, it's, it's tough. And every game is hard. Uh, and we needed that that test, you know, to uh, understand what it's going to be like the rest of the rest of the way. So I like the way that we responded uh, when when it was necessary. And for us, the biggest lesson is obviously try to take care of home court better than we have. And, you know, our defense usually, you know, wins games for us. Games two and five, we were terrible in the defensive end and we lost. You know, the rest of them, we were we were solid and made them work and we won. So it's pretty, pretty simple at that point. Hey, Steph, Chris, Fantasy Sports Game. Uh, you mentioned defense being key. Uh, going in against Houston, uh, do you guys think that you guys will be more focused on trying to slow them down, or you guys just think it's going to be a fast-paced three-point shootout uh, the entire series? I mean, we know how they play. They shoot a lot of threes, but it, you know, a lot of their playmaking is, is through James and CP. So they're amazingly talented offensive players, very savvy. That gamesmanship is is at a high level, so all those things we've we've experienced before, and we'll be ready for it. Um, at the end of the day, got to make them work, make them take tough shots, whether they make or miss. You know, make them defend on the other end, and very similar to this series, I think every game is going to be a full 48 of focus, and um, you know, it's going to be fun. Steph, Michael Duarte, NBC over here. We talked about it after game four, just the record of, of wins in the playoffs on the road. Uh, you guys win all three here, six straight dating back to last season. What is it about you and your team going into a hostile environment that just gets yourself up to, to play? I think we just thrive in those situations in terms of understanding, you know, we have the talent and the experience and the composure to play on the road. And 
at the end of the day, you know, that, that atmosphere we, we kind of live for, it's, it's weird uh, the way that we've played in this series, home versus away, but uh, at the end of the day, we did what we needed to do. Um, so we want to play better at home, continue the the uh, the level of play that we we do on, on the road, and, and from there, you know, set ourselves up for, for success in this next round. So um, I don't know. That's my best answer for it. Hey, um, Kareth Burke, NBC Sports Bay Area. Um, it looked like the communication was really good tonight, even to a degree where you guys were hyping each other up. I think it was at halftime that you and KD were talking. Do you remember what you said to him when he had those 38 points and just how were you guys like cohesive tonight and communicating? I think just uh, hammering down on what our intentions and, and were coming into this game, uh, knowing how well KD's been playing, trying to get him in spots that he can, you know, take advantage of their defense and the certain matchups, but the pace that we were playing and kind of the balance of everybody getting involved. You know, he was he was dominant all night, but when he didn't have the ball in his hands, I was coming off picking rolls, Draymond was making plays, uh, you know, Clay was a threat, Andre was finishing at the rim. And then our that all was kind of sparked by our defensive effort and being on the same page. So at the end of the day, body language was great, energy was great from the start. And we got out of our own way a little bit, um, and that that was a key of you know for our for our success tonight. And it's fun, so you got to hype each other up for sure. Hey Steph, over here. Um, how do you feel personally about the strategy of guarding Harden strictly to his left? We've seen the Jazz do it, we've seen the Bucks do it. How do you feel about that strategy? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, it's not how we've played traditionally, uh, but. He's had an unbelievable year, so everybody's trying everything at this point. But for us, we have solid defensive principles that we rely on and had some success last year in the playoffs. But again, everything's on the table in terms of just winning a playoff series against that team, no matter what it takes. So we'll talk about all that stuff tomorrow. Um, at the end of the day for us, it's just about being physical, having great energy. Uh, being on the same page, all five guys out there on the floor, and you know having confidence on on the end of the floor. No matter again if he makes or misses, uh, just try to make it tough on him. Hey, Steph Cameron Buford, the LA News Observer. You and Chris Paul have uh, interesting history together. Pretty competitive battles that you've had. What is it about him that gets the best out of you, or that brings the best out of you? He's an amazing player, and that's what amazing players do. They raise your level of of, uh, of of play. I mean, from the time I got in the league, like he was a guy uh, at that position that kind of set the pace, and um, he's still playing at you know, a high level. So we obviously go back to North Carolina days, and um, before I got in the league. Was I, you know, following him around, working out with him, stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's this level of respect in terms of, you know, what he's capable of. But that intensity and that competition is great and kind of thriving those those opportunities. And it's going to be another opportunity, you know, these next this next series to leave it out there on the floor. Steph, you said you're not that old yet, right, with this quick turnaround. This is the – Year five of a of a really long run, where every single year, like, how, what it, what's the fatigue level of for you guys, just day in and day out in this playoff grind right now? I think I made a joke like this first round felt like it was two months, but that was kind of just the emotional part of it and the adjustments you had to make from game to game. Obviously, losing Boogie early and losing a thirty one point lead and trying to come back on the road and. You know the the mental investment you have to put into it. Physically, we I think we feel we feel great as a team, uh, and shouldn't be any excuses there. But for us, we got to really rely on the experience in terms of being able to flip the switch from one team to the next, and uh, that'll be the biggest test. But in terms of our energy and fo and and the physical presence and being able to play a twelve thirty game on Sunday, we should be fine. Great, thank you. All right, so Steph and the Warriors face James Harden and the Rockets. Familiar foes, 
And let's run it back and do it again. We all know about the question, CP3 with the injury last year and all sorts of stuff. And, hey, the good news is a good night's sleep or two for Mike D'Antoni and his club. They've been hanging out in the Bay Area for a while, catching San Francisco Giant games. Coming up on Sunday afternoon. So a thought kind of, and well, plenty of time to, to look ahead clearly, but just kind of a quick thought. What are you looking forward to most seeing play out in this series, Spitty? Well, I think from a standpoint of you talking about fantastic stars and MVP caliber players, we, we get that. We'll get some skillful players. I think the key to the games is points in the paint with Houston Rockets, how they get points in the paint, how the Warriors defend that. And then also for the Warriors, can they muster up enough points in the paint to stay pace with the Houston Rock as far as the balance of three-point shots and getting some easy buckets. Really? Well, I think you got to try to keep James off the foul line. I think because you get guys in foul trouble. So to me, it's try to keep him on the foul line, and you got to make him play defense. Uh, their defense do a lot of switching, so you got to take advantage of when they do switch and put people in positions where they, you have the mismatches. So to me, is when they switch, can Golden State take advantage of the advantages, and can you keep James off the foul line? Yeah, how aggressive is James Harden going to be? Uh, that's that's the other thing. Took three shots in the fourth quarter in the loss in uh, Utah. Over 27 is not something they want to hear again after what happened last year. Should be fun. Two great Eastern Conference series. Are you kidding me? Dame. Mm-hmm. I mean, do we not have enough? How about a game seven? That's coming. Busy weekend of basketball. Good having you with us. See you next time on Game Time.